Hello, my name is David Lance. Um, have you ever wanted to find a resource that gives you information about uh, global or, or uh, at least national trends? Well, I have found a resource that's called the Q Research Center. They have lots of information on a lot of topics and uh, today I want to talk about a particular trend that they had an article about that relates to a topic that I'm interested in about online evangelism. So for example the Pew Research Center uh, recently published an article titled The Changing Global Religious Landscape. One of the things that they discovered is that between the years 2010 and 2050, the world Muslim population will grow by 73%, but the world's Christian population will only grow by 35%. That has major implications in terms of what's happening around the world. Uh, for, for my purposes today, I think it gives us um, an opportunity to think about how we do evangelism. Lots of people are used to physically going overseas, but what if we were to use the internet? You know, there's a, a movie called Robots, and there's the character, Rodney Copperbottom, who has developed a ministry principle where he says, see a need, fill a need. Well, uh, I think that there is a need for electronic evangelism, or something I'll simply call evangelism, especially to the Muslim world. Um, you know, if we are filled with the Holy Spirit, then we are enabled to do as Christ has commanded us to go and make disciples. And uh, it, he also equips us through the Holy Spirit to be engaged in, in spiritual warfare in the heavenly realms. And so <clears throat> if you're feeling called to somehow get into this uh, spiritual warfare to win Muslims to Christ, but don't know how, I'd like to suggest the first thing that you do is find a book titled Secret Believers, what happens when Muslims believe in Christ? One of the things you'll find when you read that book is that a lot of Muslims who are seeking Christ secretly go on online chat rooms so they can have private conversations to learn more about Jesus because they're fearful of, of talking to people in, in their communities because of what their families might do to them. You know, if you think about how to engage online, uh, think of how, you know, if you're on Facebook or whatever, you probably got this group or to that group that you're a member of. Baby boomers tend to hang out with baby boomers. Millennials hang out with millennials. Agnostics and atheists hang out with agnostics and atheists. And people of various faiths, include, including Muslims, hang out with their own groups of people. It's just something that we do as a part of human nature. Well, what if we were to look at the challenge of redeeming the culture by seeing each of these as seeker groups on the internet, and we were to then take the concept of doing ministry and apply it to the internet? Well, first, we'd need a plan and we'd need to stick to it. And second, we'd need to learn about how to use the iron of the culture, the technology, and how we communicate with others in an online environment. And third, we need to count the cost and realize that we need to prepare in advance and be committed for the long haul. You know, Ecclesiastes 4.12 says that, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily, quickly broken. And so I encourage you, if you're going to do online ministry, to do it in a group of three. Uh, have a team leader perhaps somebody who's more knowledgeable about interacting with the Muslims or whatever group that you're going to get engaged with, and then go find an online chat room. Uh, the, the, the team leader engages the seeker that's on the chat room, but then a friendly supporter uh, comes along and, and makes uh, additional comments and or asks questions to sort of keep the planned conversation moving. You've got to plan this ahead of time. And then another third uh, friendly supporter sort of plays a devil's advocate, uh, sort of uh, like the bad cop, good cop, bad cop type of relationship. And so only the team leader engages with the seeker, unless the seeker directly asks one of the two supporters. And this is a training sort of thing, so as you uh, become more familiar with it, everybody on the team can change roles if that seems desirable. And so uh, if you uh, want to learn more about how to apply the wise jargon of God's holy word to the culture around us, I'd like to encourage you to, to click on a video link that I'll provide that will take you to a lesson uh, that I've created about how to use the art of Socratic instruction to lead online conversations. It's part of a, uh, it's a lesson of, of um, one of my courses titled How to Teach Online. Well, Thanks so much for today, and God bless.